Okay, in this lesson, we'll see how to create custom tags for JSP. Custom tags are pretty popular in web development technologies. For Java, we've been using the JSTL tags. And uh, there are custom tags in ASP.NET. And there are custom tags in CodeFusion, which is a web technology developed by Adobe, the company behind Flash and Photoshop. And the Java server faces a Java web technology based on Servlet and JSP also use custom tags. One important thing about this custom text is that unlike the regular HTML text, these texts are not interpreted by a browser. The application server interprets this text to generate code and or HTML content, so the end users never see them. These texts, however, are good for developers because they are easy to learn, easy to use, and easy to parse, validate, and evaluate by development tools. In this lesson, we'll see how to create custom tags in Java. There are two ways to do it. We can either use Java code or use something called a tag file, which is basically a JSP file. We'll also see how to create functions that can be used in expression language. These functions are not exactly tags, but they are created in a similar way. It is required that a Java custom tag must belong to a tag library. So the first thing we do if we want to create a custom tag is to create a tag library descriptor, or TLD. A TLD is an XML document that contains information about a tag library and the tags in the library. TLDs are used by application servers and development tools to locate and validate custom tags. Here are a couple of things about TLD. First, a TLD file must have the TLD, .tld suffix. And secondly, TLD files must be placed under certain folders. Usually, they should be somewhere under webinfo, webinf, except webinf classes and webinf lib, which are for compiled Java class files and the, the Java files. If you want to package a tag library as a Java file, the TLD must be somewhere under the metainf folder inside the Java file. This is what a TLD file looks like. Let's create this TLD file in Eclipse, and then we'll explain a little bit about the tags inside this file. As I mentioned, the place to place a TLD file is somewhere under the webinf folder. You can put, put it directly under webinf, or typically I would like to put them under a subfolder called TLD, and I would put my TLD files under those folder, my JSP files in a separate folder, and so on. And then let's create a TLD file. It doesn't really matter what you name it, as long as it has a TLD suffix. I'm going to call my cs320.tld. And then let's copy over this one. So as we can see, it is a XML file, like most of the metadata files in Java EE. The top level element is tag lib, the version attribute, and the XML schema determines which version of JSP specification this TLD follows. And here it says 2.1, and it means that uh, we are creating a TLD file that follows the JSP 2.1 specification. Right now, there are no custom tags in this library yet. So the 
tags here or the elements here are used to describe the library itself, like the display name of the library, the short name of the library, and the version of this tag library. The version number is something that you can decide. Here I'm using 1.0, and later if I release a new version, I could change this to 1.1 or 2.0 or something. The most important element here is this URI element. Remember that when we use the tag lib directive to import a tag library into a JSP, we must specify a URI, and this is where that URI comes from. As we mentioned before, this URI is just an identifier. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's unique. Typically, people use a URL format like this. And you can follow some naming conventions like company name, and then group name, and then project name, and then name of the library. This way, you can be sure that the URI will be unique. Now that we have our TLD, let's add some tags to it. The first tag we'll create is add, and uh, the tag will look like this. This tag will have two attributes, OP1 and OP2, and it will display the sum of these two attributes. Let's first create this tag. We are going to implement this tag using Java, so I'm going to create a Java class. I'll call it Java tag. I like to name most my tag classes uh, as a something tag. Uh, it's not a requirement. You don't have to call it some tag. You can just call it add if you want. But uh, since it's an implementation of a tag, typically I like to call them uh, some tag. And uh, I'm going to put it in a separate package. I'm going to put it in the 320 tag. And uh, that's it. And uh, this tag should inherit from this super class called simple tag support. So we'll do. Actually, why don't I just copy over this thing? So we'll do. Oops, not here. Extends, extend simple tag support. And uh, we'll have a couple of setters, and then we'll have a method called do tag. OK. The tag class will look like this, overwrite, yes, it's overriding, and, uh, okay. So, this is what the tag class looks like. Notice, notice that we have three methods here. We have two setters, set op1, set op2. Remember that this tag will have two attributes, OP1 and OP2. And uh, these two setters basically let the tag implantation to get the values of those two attributes. So when the user specifies 10 and 20, this, these two setters will be caught and uh, the attribute value OP1 and OP2 will be set into the two fields here, and then later on we can do something with it. The main method in this tag implantation class is the do tag method. It's kind of like do get and do put in servlet, and do tag, as you can tell by the name, this method will be invoked when the application server tries to execute or try to process this tag. And inside this tag, also quite similar to a typical servlet, in servlet you would say 
response get out and then it will provide a writer that you can use to print out some output uh, very similar here uh, except that uh, instead of uh, response get out this one will say get gst context get out and it returns a writer that we can use to produce output and we use that writer to produce the sum of the two uh, two operands or the two attributes and uh, if everything works correctly this should produce the sum of the two attributes and that's the output we would want so this is the implementation of the tag the main things of course are the setters which let, let us to access the attribute values and this do tag method we have to implement to to process to let the application server to run this tag or process this tag now once we have that implementation we can add that tag into the tld and it will look something like this Okay. Okay. So now we have added this tag implementation to our TLD. And uh, as you can see, most of the elements here are fairly self explanatory. For example, we have a tag element, and uh, this tag element, of course, uh, declares a tag and the tag has a name add and the tag is implemented by this java class cs320.tag.addTag tag and that's our java class and uh, this tag has has two attributes one is called op1 another called op2 and uh, both two attributes are required attributes so this required elements specified as true there are only two elements here that need a little bit explanation and these are the body content element and the rtexpr value element body content refers to the content between an opening tag and a closing tag for example we could have a tag any tag it will be some tag and then something something and then close that some tag and body content is basically this part the part that between the opening tag and the closing tag and here we are saying that the body content of add tag is empty which means it doesn't have any body content in JSP specification you may specify one or four values for body content we are currently using empty but you can also use JSP meaning that the body content can be basically anything including JSP scripting, uh, scripting elements and uh, you can also specify body content to be scriptless this means it can be anything except JSP scripting elements you can specify body content as empty or as tag dependent tag dependent means JSP will treat the body content as plain text so it doesn't process the body content in any way and it's up to the custom tag to process the body content the RT EXPR value element stands for request time expression value it basically determines whether the attribute can take expression language we'll see how it works when we run the tag and uh, then let's try run this tag so we'll create a JSP page I'll create new JSP and uh, I'm going to call this tag lib text 
set the tag with test. And uh, normally our JSP would import the JSTL tag library, but this time we are going to import our own tag library. <coughs> Excuse me. And our own tag library, notice that it has a URI of this one. And uh, so the URI here will be this now. And uh, for our tag library, I'm going to give it a prefix CS320. And uh, then we'll say this is the result of the add tag. And uh, I'm going to put an add tag there. So just like using any other tag library, we say the prefix, and then we say the tag name. And uh, notice that the tag name is add. And then we specify uh, we specify the first attribute op1 or operand1, and let's say it's 10, and then the second one is 20. And uh, because this tag doesn't have any body content, so we simply close this tag, and um, this should do it. So let's see if we run this. Uh, let me add that to here. So it will be tag tag lib test and uh, tag lib test dot JSP. Okay. And uh, click and it shows. 30 and uh, that's exactly what we expect if we do a view source we can see that it outputs 30 and it doesn't show any any of this because the custom tag is incorporated by the application server application server execute or process this tag and then produce the output that we want if I change this to, for example, 31, and uh, if we refresh, it shows 41. And uh, better yet, we can do, for example, param A, and then param B. And uh, if we say, Tag lib A is 11 and B is 22, it shows 33. So, in other words, we can specify expression language here and uh, it will be evaluated just like before. Now, let's change this so that it doesn't accept expression language. So, RT expression value basically says whether this attribute can take expression language value and uh, it worked before like this because currently both of them are true so let's say we set this one to false and then let's run this code again and uh, if we try this again it will give us an error. It says, according to TLD or attribute directive, attribute OP2 does not accept any expressions. And this is basically what RTEXP value does. So if we change it to something else or change it to a fixed value, now it works again. So most of the time, if you create a custom tag, you would want to set request time expression value to true. But once in a while, if uh, for whatever reason you really 
does not want to accept the extraction value, you, know, you can set it to true, of course. Uh, you can set it to false, of course. So now that we have seen our first example, let's understand uh, how the whole thing works. So what happens when we put a custom, custom tag like this in our JSP? So what happens is that the application server will try to process this JSP file and uh, it will see there's a custom tag here. So the first thing it does is it takes the prefix of the custom tag and then look for the URI of the tag library. So prefix CS320, prefix CS20, and then it will find that the URI of this tag library is CS320STO31 example and so on. So once it finds that, it will try to locate the TLD file. Remember that all TLD files must have the TLD suffix and they must be under web uh, info or a a subfolder of web inf. So the application server will then locate all the TLDs and uh, try to find which TLD corresponds to this URI. And uh, it will find that, uh, okay, this is the UI TLD that matches this uh, URI. Oops. It will find that UR TLD that matches this URI. And then it will look at the tag name. So tag name is add. So it will find the tag inside this TLD that has that tag name add. So from there, it can find which Java class implements this tag, what uh, other information about this tag is, for example, whether this tag supports any body content, what attribute it should have, whether those attributes are required or not, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, how the whole thing works, starting from a custom tag in JSP, to the TLD and then to the actual implementation of the tag. Now that we know how custom tags work, let's look at the superclass simple tag support or this class. The documentation of that class is here. As we can see, there are only a few methods in this class. Some of these methods are setters, like set parent, set JSP context, set JSP body, and usually we don't need to worry about those. And then there are a couple of methods that deals with parent and ancestor tags like uh, get parent and uh, find ancestor with class. These two methods are useful if we write fairly complex tags like nested tags like uh, C truth, C when, and C otherwise. But usually we don't need to do that. The most commonly used methods from this class are really just three do tag, get JSP body, and then get JSP context. We already know do tag is the main method called by the application server to process the tag. Now let's use a couple of examples to see how to use get JSP body and get JSP context. Suppose we want to create a tag called request info. And this tag displays some request information. It will have one attribute type, which determines what type of information regarding the request we want to display. For example, if type is method, we display the request method like a get or post. And if type is something else like URI, we'll display the request URI and so on and so forth. So let's implement this tag first. So 
server is already stopped and uh, let's create another tag and uh, this tag I'm going to call it request info tag and uh, there's only one attribute type so we'll have one setter called type and uh, we'll say this type is type and uh, depending on the type will display certain information about the type for example we could say if type equals ignore case is a method and then we do display request method now the problem however is of course uh, how do we get the request method well the main trick here is to understand that there's a get JSP context method we can use and this get JSP context method returns something called a JSP context now if you look at the methods in JSP context it doesn't have lots of useful methods what's most important however is to know that this JSP context is actually a page context. In other words, we can say page context is page context get JSP context. So what's so interesting about page context? Well, look at the API and you can see that page context let you to access basically everything about this page and uh, the environment surrounding this page or the context around this page. And that includes request, response, and then from your request, you can do session and so on. Like you can get servlet config, servlet context. You can even get session directly. You don't even have to go through request. So page context is a really, really important object. And uh, it's uh, not an exaggeration to say, if you have access to page context, you have access to everything. So now that we know when we do a get JSP context, we get a page context. Well, the rest is easy. So from page context, we'll get a request, and uh, that request is a servlet request. And uh, from that request, of course, we can do uh, anything we want. So we'll kind of say request get method. Oh, servlet request doesn't have a method. We have to cast it to HTTP servlet request, which is all right. And uh, then this request give us a method okay. and uh, we can say else if type is something else I say if type is URI we'll print out request URI get request where is request URI here and then we can say else if test type is is mm, client address, it will print.
print out request get remote address something like this or otherwise we can print out and support it type something like this print line okay and uh, once we have this once we have this implantation, just like before, we'll add it to the TLD. And uh, so we'll add uh, another tag, and this one we'll call it request info. It's implemented by the request info tag. The body content is empty, the attribute is type, it's a required attribute except the expression language something like that and then let's see if we can use that tag here we'll say this is the request info tag and uh, what does it do it uh, can show us the request method so we'll say request info type is method and uh, it can also show us the request URI something like this and uh, let's try this It says get and unsupported type. Why it says unsupported type? Oh, it says you are, uh, should be you are I. And uh, let's try client. Okay, so the client address is a local host. So this is a fairly simple example. Uh, the main thing in this example is how to utilize JSP context. And uh, the most important thing, of course, is to understand that the JSP context is actually a page context. And then from a page context, you can get pretty much everything. You can get request response, servlet context, and so on. So although there's only there are only three useful methods in the simple tech support super class. Uh, they are actually pretty uh, useful. Uh, JSP context gives us page context. Now let's look at the let's look at the uh, another example. So far, the text we created have no body content. Now let's create a tag that has one. We'll call this tag cap tag. And uh, this tag will convert its body content to all capital letters. So for example, hello world will become hello world in uh, all capital letters. So how do we do that? Well, uh, let's implement that. And uh, once again, we'll recycle add tag. And uh, this one will say cap tag. In this tag, well, this tag doesn't have any attributes, so we can get rid of attributes. And uh, we still need the output. And then the output would be the capitalized version of the body content. The question here, however, is uh, how do we get the body content? Well, if we look at the API, there's a method called getGSPBody, and uh, 
you would naturally think that this one is the body content and uh, you would be right. Now the only thing is that uh, this body content is of this JSP fragment class. If you look at this class, this class doesn't have a, this class is not a string. And uh, this one is not something that you can simply print it out. What it does have is a method called invoke. And it says, execute this fragment and directs all output to the given writer. So what does this mean? It means that uh, this body content is not a simple string. Remember that a body content in a JSP can be some plain text, but it can also be, for example, a piece of expression language. It can even be some JSP scripting elements. So in other words, it's not a static string, it's actually a piece of code. And uh, this is why there is a method called invoke here. So what this one does is it will actually evaluate that piece of code. And then from that piece of code, create some output. And that output will be written into this writer. And then later on, we can do something with that. So knowing that, let's uh, actually invoke our body content. The way we do that is we have to have a writer first. So we'll use a string writer. And uh, what this string writer does is it will store anything written to this writer to a string. And then later on, we'll print out that string. So we'll create a, create a string writer. And then we'll say get JSP body and then invoke and invoke the output for the string writer. So after that, what do we do? Well, we print out the content of the string writer. We'll say string writer to string. Yeah, something like that should do it. Okay, so the tag really is pretty simple. And uh, again, we need to add it to the TLD. So this one will be called cap, and it's implemented with cap tag. The body content is no longer empty. Remember the four types of body content, and uh, I'm going to use a script list, meaning that uh, it can be anything except JSP scripting elements. And there are no attributes for this for this tag, so it's just name, tag class, and body content. And uh, then let's go back to our test JSP and uh, let's test it out. And we'll say this is the mm, cap tag. And uh, we'll do say a 320 cap hello world. Something like that. And uh, let's run it. And uh, hello world is not capitalizing anything. Oh, that's because we are not capitalizing anything here. So we do string writer to string, and then we do to uppercase. Okay, now it should uh, capitalize. And uh, do I need to? Okay, so let's refresh. Okay, now it <laughs> capitalize it, and uh, just to drive the point home, let's say we put a param text here. So we'll give it a parameter that says text is this is a good class. 
and uh, it shows this is a good class here. And uh, if you look at here, you can see why JSP body is not a simple string, because if it's a simple string, then instead of this is a good class, we want to see the capitalized uh, param dot text, and that's obviously not what we want. And because each part of JSP can actually be a piece of code, and this is why it uh, has to first invoke the code or evaluate the code to produce the results, and then we can print out the results or you know, manipulate the results. And uh, in this example, the most important thing is how to use JSP body, and uh, to understand that a JSP body is not just a string, it's a piece of code. Other than using Java code, we can also create custom tags using a special type of JSP called tag files. Tag files must have the dot tag suffix, and that they must be placed somewhere under the folder web inf tags or its subdirectories. Or if you package your tag library in a jar file, then tag files must be under meta inf tags. So let's see an example. Suppose I want to create a tag called greeting. This tag will produce a greeting where the body content is a message like hello, and the attribute is the name of the person we want to greet. For example, if the name attribute is Joe, the body content is hello, it will show hello, comma, Joe, exclamation mark. Notice that uh, technically what it does is simply display the body content part. So this is basically the body content, and then a comma, and then the attribute value, and then exclamation mark. So this is really what it does. So how can we create that? Well, let's uh, create it. And uh, as I just mentioned, the folder needs to be called tags. So we create one. And then the file itself needs to have the dot tag suffix. So we'll call it greeting.tag. And the content is really just a JSP file or a somewhat special JSP file. So what makes it special? Well, first of all, notice that we are using this to implement a tag. So it's only part of a JSP. And because of that, you won't see any page directive in a tag file because it's not a full page. What you will see, however, are two additional directives. One is called the tag directive, and one is the attribute directive. And uh, the tag directive is equivalent to a tag element inside the TLD, and uh, it basically specifies certain attributes of the tag. So what it says here is that this tag has a some body content, and the body content is script, scriptless. And that's the equivalent of creating a tag element in TLD, and then specify body content to be empty. And uh, the attribute, tag, uh, attribute directive is equivalent to the attribute element inside the TLD. And uh, this directive basically says we are going to have a attribute called name, and it is a required attribute. So that's, that's equivalent to saying name is name, required is true. We didn't specify 
request time expression value and uh, by default if i remember correctly uh, that would be true so we don't have to specify it and uh, what does this one do well jst do body is equivalent to get jsp body then invoke so what it does is it uh, invokes the body content of the tag and then store the result in a variable called message and uh, the rest of the tag specify what's being uh, what will be displayed or what will be printed out and uh, this part is equivalent to the out.print part so as you can see uh, it's doing more or less the same thing as what the uh, java implementation of the tag would do except that instead of saying out print you can simply show the uh, display or the content to be displayed instead of calling get JSV body invoke and then create a string writer or something to hold the output you can simply say JSV do body and then spit and then save the output in a variable so uh, by and large uh, it's the same thing as before except that instead of writing java code you are just using a jsp to do the same thing and uh, more often than not a tag file is likely to be simpler than writing code uh, as you can see um, if you write code you have to inherit from a super class and you have to create your own string writer and so on and uh, a JSP is uh, generally speaking uh, takes less code to write and uh, just like before we still need to add that into the TLD and uh, to add that we no longer need to use the tag tag uh, tag tag element instead we are used we are going to use tag file which takes two sub element name and then parts so the tld will look like this we'll say tag file is it a tag dash file yes it's tag file and uh, this tag file has a tag name no it's just name the name is greeting that's the name of the tag and then the class of the tag is webinf tags and then greeting.tag so this is basically what it looks like so we still need to specify the name of the tag and but everything else is already inside the tag so we don't need to specify body content or attribute because they are already specified inside the tag file okay so that uh, would be what the tag file look like and this is how to add a tag file into a tld and uh, then this is the tag file and the tag file will say is every 20 greeting name is joe and uh, the greeting message is hello and uh, if we do that is my server running yes it is running so refresh it says hello joe and uh, again if you look at the source of the generated html output it's just regular html there's nothing nothing like the uh, like this in the uh, final generated html content okay so this is how we can create a tag using tag files and uh, then we'll see how to create functions that can be used in expression language you have seen such functions in the JSTL functions library. Uh, for example, many of you have either seen or used uh, this function in expression language. 
and uh, this one, for example, returns a length of a string or the number of elements in a collection. Uh, in a collection. Notice that uh, these functions are not really tags, but they also need to be declared in a TLD, just like a custom tags. Creating an expression language function like this is actually pretty easy because any static function in Java can be used as an as a expression language function. Let's look at the example. So suppose we want to create an EL function that can translate a sentence into the so-called lead talk. In lead talk, we simply replace certain letters with others. For example, we, we would replace F with PH. We would replace E with 3. And we would replace A with 4, and so on. So a uh, sentence in regular English like, fear my math programming skills, will become something like this. This can be achieved uh, quite easily with a function. And uh, inside the function, we basically do some substring replacement. To make that function our expression language function, we have to create the function as a static function. It doesn't really matter where you specify, uh, where you, uh, what class you use to create that function. Uh, I'm going to just create a class called functions. And uh, principally, if I have many expression language functions, I can group them all in the same class. I'll create this function called uh, lead talk. And uh, it's a public static function. Remember, it has to be a static function or static method. I should call it static method. And uh, it returns a string, and then uh, it takes a string, which is the original string. And then what we do is we do some replacement. We'll say replace f with ph, and then we'll replace e with and we'll replace A with 4, E with 3, and A with 4. OK, that's correct. And then we return this whole thing, okay, something like this. OK, so now we have that static method. We can we can declare it at the, at the expression language function in our TLD. And uh, what we need is a function element, and then name, and then function class, and function signature. So we'll say function, and then name. And the name, I'll call it lead talk. Function, function what? Function class. Function class is cf320.tag.functions. So that is this one. And this is where our static method is defined. And uh, the function signature is string. Notice that we have to specify the full name of the string class and uh, lead talk, and then it takes a parameter string, something like this. Okay, so this should do it. And uh, in our JSP, where is our JSP? This one. And uh, we'll say this is the EL function. And the uh, EL function, remember, is 
used inside the expression language and uh, we'll say cf320 lead talk and then we give it a string and we'll say fear my math programming skills yeah something like that and uh, let's try this Let's start the server. And uh, refresh. And uh, it says, fail to parse the expression. Oh, I missed a closing parenthesis there. Fear my math programming skills parenthesis. Okay, it says fear my whatever. Okay, so this is how we can create create our expression language function, just like the uh, expression language functions in JSTL. And uh, as you can see, although they are not custom tags, uh, they are included in a TLD like uh, like other uh, like custom tags. Okay, so basically, custom tags are yet another tool in our Java web development toolbox, and uh, just like serverless beans and JSTs. Custom text has its role in the MVC architecture. As you can probably tell, its role is in the view part. Generally speaking, if you have a view-related, self-contained and reusable function, you may want to create a custom tag for it. For example, suppose you want to display numbers in Roman num uh, numerals. For example, instead of one, two, three, four, you would want to display them as one or two or three or four in Roman, uh, in Roman numerals. And if you think about it, this is very much a view-related requirement, and uh, it doesn't depend on any other parts of your application. And uh, this is something that you may want to do in some other applications as well. So for this one, it would be perfect to create a custom tag so that you can do something like this, nice and simple in your JSP file, and then later on you can reuse this custom tag in some other, in, in some other applications. And uh, this is what uh, custom tags are used for. They use for this type of reusable snippets of uh, functionality related to your views. In this lesson, we covered how to create custom tags. Unlike serverless and beans, you don't need to create custom tags all that often. And when you do, most of the time they're pretty straightforward. If you ever need to create more complex tags like nested tags, for example, tags like uh, C choose, C win, and C otherwise, you can check out some additional examples online. In particular, Apache's G JSTL implementation is open source, and uh, they can serve as very good examples. Okay, so this is the end of this lesson.